In this video, I'll show you the most important tips and tricks in eFootball 2024, regardless of whether you're a beginner or a pro player. I will cover all topics from the right controller settings to how to shoot precise daily penalties, which boxes are worth investing as a free-to-play player, how you should deal with your GPs most effectively, what you have to pay attention to when leveling your players correctly, attribute-wise as well as skill-wise, and of course, which formations and tactics work the best in this gameplay, no matter which platform. First of all, you can answer most of your questions in the extra section when you go into the help section, and then general information, here you can see every topic from objectives to the dream team mode all events even possible to see the player stats player skills what are their meanings you know you can see it here for example scissors paint enables players to execute the scissors paint at high speed you can look up everything in the help section general information this channel with the subscribers is exploding guys thank you very much for that and to keep pushing this explosion Make sure if you didn't subscribe yet to do so that you don't miss any new upcoming video, guys. The next point is the controller settings, which I want to show you just really quickly because I've made already a meta video. You can check it out here above me, guys, where I'm showing every setting, camera, controller, formation, everything what you need. Okay, you can check this out. But this is important for me to show you that the cursor change should always be on semi-assisted because this is the most effective, most precise one. Not too assisted, not too manual. The manual cursor change I prefer on player oriented and the path assist on level two, same as the cursor change that it's not too assisted and not too manual. Tackle type should always be on shoulder charge. Sharp touch is pressing twice the best option. I also prefer to activate the next player indicator that you can see who will be the next player to attack with the AI pressure, call for pressure, but also to see which player you would get next if you would press the L1 button on the PlayStation to switch the players. The rest is up to you, like direction guides, target guides, etc. It's just a matter of taste. What about the eFootball points? If you click in, you're coming to this section and on the PlayStation is triangle. You can see it at the bottom of the screen, the details. When you press the details button, you can see when your eFootball points are expiring. This is really important because if you let them expire, you are just wasting them. In this section now, you can see at the bottom, ends in 24 days and 15 hours, 1,700 eFootball points. So if I don't do nothing with them, they will be lost. And we want to avoid this. How? Go for the item section, for example, and get some XP trainers. Something at least. You can see we have an offer here that you can get 1000 XP training programs for 1250 points. I take it because we are losing 1700 points in the next 24 hours. Payment confirmation? Yes, we want it. And now we have like 450 points left. And this is something which we will use for the 100 training programs. Now I purchased four 100 XP items and one 1000 XP item. And when we now go back to the expiring dates, you can see that the 24 hours is gone. The next will expire in 53 days and that means that we have enough time. Definitely use your eFootball points and don't waste them. You can also go for strips like here, this eFootball dual strip. Get it, it's for free. Get some players, no matter which ones, and even if you don't want to use them, sell them. Get the GP, get the XP trainers from it. It's definitely worth it. The same goes for the nominating contracts because they are expiring as well. You can check it out on the detail section here on the PlayStation. Once again, it's with Triangle. And we can see that on the 5th of February, means we have some time, today is the 7th of January, that the three-star nominating contract will expire and the four-star nominating contract will expire too. So use them, go for any nominating contract in the star section, star selection, get it. And if you don't want to use it, release it just to get the XP trainers, the GPs, etc. And the next topic, I want to show you how you can increase the probability of scoring goals in the daily game 
for the daily penalties. On the PlayStation, you can activate the aiming guide. It's with R2 on the PlayStation, but you can see it on every platform. And this helps you to see where you are aiming to. And I would always recommend you to activate it. And now what you will do is aiming into the corner, almost at the post like this. And then you're loading up the bar for 100%. Okay, not 80, not 90, not 95. Make it full. Full 100% loading up like this. And almost every time you will score. Okay, it will be really hard for the goalkeeper to catch the ball to save the ball. I have two points for free-to-play players now. One is they are asking me every time which box is worth it. You know, they are saving up their coins for a long period. And then they are asking me, should I go for this? Should I go for that? This is the question which I will answer now. The second point is I will show you how you can effectively level your players very, very effectively without spending money into the game. Which players are worth it, which are not to go in as a free to play player when you are saving your coins. Of course, when you see this agent with Cruyff, it's tempting to go in. I don't disagree, but I never, never, ever recommend a free to play player to spend his money on epics on 150 players epic boxes never ever do that guys let's say you've saved your coins and you have 3000 coins okay for like one month two months you've saved it up of course you can be now lucky if you go for multiple spins three multiple spins and get johan croy i had two chance deals and three multiple spins and i got croy of course this can happen but the probability is not high you know what can happen that you save up your coins for two months go into this epic box and you get nothing nothing but like these players only this crap so don't use your safe coins for epic boxes it's not worth it the risk is too high even when we're talking about the best of the best epics like let's say we are getting a booster romario i would hesitate to recommend you go into these boxes what's even worthier than this is for example a play of the week box you can see we have some great players and this time we have a box with 33 players and you can empty the box the probability is really high that you will get good players as a road to glory player here in this case it's Mbappe it's Rice it's Lionel Messi it's De Jong look at this De Jong he's got great abilities in my opinion and also great skills the probability is really high that you will get something good and even better than play of the weeks are these packs in these packs we are getting managers and players and especially the current packs are really effective really good because the managers are giving a boost to your whole team i've bought the manchester united pack with ten Hag because you can see that ten Hag gives in the long ball counter play style which i am using every player a plus one increase in speed so for example you're a quick counter player you can go for simone inzaghi and increase your stamina you can go for pioli also for quick counter he increases the tackling for example and so on and so on you can do it for all other managers for your own play style and additionally you're getting a box with 11 players okay even if you don't use them you can get the gps from it you can get xp trainers etc etc but these packs are really good for the manager you're buying these packs for the manager not for the players what I'm trying to say is these packs are way worthier than Epic Box because you know what you are getting from it. I have a trick for you how you can level your players really fast, really effective without spending money into the game. And this is with the My League mode. In the My League mode, you are playing against the AI. And what the really nice thing here is, is that you can let your AI play, like simulation match, like in the events. So you don't even have to be there and your players will play by themselves. The really great function here is that you can boost the XP's. And I'll show you now how. For that, you're going to the exchange points here in this section my league items and now when you scroll down you can see xp points twice boost twice for 3000 points i didn't make any game any match nothing and i have already 10,000 points you can do it once and you will get twice xp for five matches and there's the option for the triple version and you can obtain this for 6000 points and even four times xp boost four times 
for five matches. This is a huge boost for the leveling and it costs you 9,000 points. While you're doing these matches, you're gaining more and more my league points and you can obtain this once again. So this is a great style, a great way to level your players. Even if this is a different mode, if this is online, it counts for your main team, it counts for the dream team mode, it counts for the division and online games. This topic now, the player abilities, is really important to me and I will show you on which attributes and characteristics you need to take care of most. As an example, I take Romario now, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So I just want to give you an overview that you can also see that it's visible what I'm talking about. We have different attributes. You all know that, like attacking awareness, speed, etc. All of these. What I want to talk about now is First thing, the awareness function, the awareness attribute. It's really underestimated in my opinion in the community and underrated. For me, the awareness is one of the most crucial and elementary points in this game. For Romario, in this case, it's attacking awareness. If we would now talk about the defender as a center back or something, it would be defensive awareness. And for the goalkeeper, it's the goalkeeping awareness. When you go into the definition, it will say that the awareness stat will improve and increase the reaction times to the ball of the player. Okay, he will react faster to the ball. It's an unclear definition in my opinion because the impact is way higher. The player moves faster. He moves faster, he positions himself better and it has got a huge effect on the pitch. So when you level your players, you should take care of the awareness function. Another point is that some attributes are correlating with each other. For example, I'm talking often in my streams about the trinity of nimbleness. What means that? We have three attributes combined which leads to a fast nimble player. This is acceleration, balance and dribbling. So if you have these three abilities on a high value, your player will be fast and nimble, even when the tight possession is not the highest. Another correlating example would be the aerial strength. When you level your players, you can see that his jumping is increasing, his physical contact is increasing, and his heading is increasing. So these are also three factors which are working together and which are correlating together. For example, your player has got high jumping, but low physical contact. So when he jumps, there is a possibility that he will lose the aerial duel due to the physical contact when he is getting tackled in the air from the opponent. But together, he is improving the chance to win the aerial duel, to win the header. Same for heading. And in the next step, I will combine these attributes leveling with the player skills because they are connected to each other. It's really important to have the knowledge how to level your players by looking at the skills, looking at the attributes and looking at other characteristics, which I'm talking about now. The characteristics, which I mean, you can see it right under me. You have weak foot usage, weak foot accuracy and four. Injury resistance is not the most important one here. Weak foot accuracy, you always need to take care of that. Why? If the accuracy is not on very high, his precision, his accuracy will decrease when he's shooting and passing. And when it's not the highest, you can compensate this lack in accuracy, this lack in weak foot accuracy with the player skill outside curler. So instead of using his left foot, he, in this case Romario, okay, the left is his weak foot, he will use his right foot to make an outside curler. In this case, he's got it already, okay, Konami is smart here and made it already, but if he wouldn't have this, you could equip him with outside curler to compensate this lack in accuracy. While we are talking about compensating, the next important, really important point is that you can compensate a lack in ability with a skill. What do I mean? We have here, for example, the low pass and the lofted pass, which is really low. Passing abilities are abilities which you can compensate with skills. We have the one-touch pass, we have the through passing, we have the weighted pass, we have the pinpoint crossing and with all of these skills you can increase his abilities in passing and player skills are always higher prioritized than player abilities the effect and the impact of a skill is higher than the effect and impact of an ability same goes for the curl ability for example 
If you equip him now with an additional skill, long range curler, how I did it here, his curl shots will have a higher accuracy. Even that his curl ability is not the highest with 81. You can improve the finishing with acrobatic finishing, with first time shot, which are a huge help to compensate a lack in finishing. And then there are abilities which you cannot compensate with skills. For example, speed and acceleration. There is no skill which is called booster or lightning speed or something like that. That's a skill which could improve his pace. There is nothing like that. The reason why I'm mentioning this is because of the leveling. When you level your players, always keep this in mind that you have skills how you can improve the player's abilities. That's the reason why I, for example, in my levelings, often decrease the passing a lot and increase, for example, acceleration a lot. Because the passing abilities, I can compensate. One touch pass, weighted pass, through passing. I'm using often these three skills. But there's nothing how I could improve the acceleration. How to level players properly. Also for this, I've made an exact subtle detail tutorial which you can check out here. But I want to show you quickly here on which aspects you need to take care of. I see many players are complaining because with the customized individual levelings, you are not getting the highest overall rating. Guys, don't look at the overall rating. It's not important. The customized abilities. The stats are the most important point. It doesn't matter if Romario has got 100 or 98. His abilities are the most important point here. I reset now Romario and go for auto allocate. Here you go. This is auto allocate. He's on 97 rated. Let's go. Let's see. This is how Romario looks like now. High attacking awareness, high acceleration, high balance. But his dribbling is not the highest as well as his finishing. For me, Romario is too nimble and I want to pull out the best out of his dribblings and I want to increase it a lot. So his attacking awareness to have it high is nice, also his acceleration, but I would like to change it a little bit to tailor him onto my needs. For that, I'm going to the player progression again, so I'm resetting him. And now I will give him a little more in shooting, that he's got 90 finishing. And the dribbling part is the most important one. Look at this. With 88, he will go into the gameplay boost with 90 ball control and 90 tight possession. The attacking awareness, acceleration and balance I am decreasing now a little bit, but you can still see it's above 90 plus. He is running often behind the opponent's backline and for these sprints he needs to be fast, he needs to have a high top speed. Now he looks like this with way higher dribbling abilities, but his attacking awareness is a little decreased as well as his acceleration and balance, which still looks really good. He has got higher finishing. For me, he looks way better with this leveling now. But if we look at the overall rating, it's 96, minus one than the auto allocate. So with the auto allocate, in most of the times, you're getting the highest rating. But it's not the best rating. It's not the best leveling, guys. At least not every time. Like in 10 to 20% auto allocate is a good option, but I don't prefer this option. Where to use your GPs? How to use your GPs wisely? The skill trainer legacy transfer is the one to go. It's the most useful function for GPs. With the legacy transfer, you're able to transfer skills from one player to another player. And if you want to know how exactly this works with step-by-step -step instructions, check out the link below in the description. It's from Kulavik. He is my friend and my moderator on my streams. He made a really nice breakdown of this legacy transfer and it will answer all of your questions. My short conclusion for this topic is that you need to use a free player. In this case, I am using Roberto Lacerna, who is giving me often very, very good skills. And I'm only using him. I take him and then I equip him with one skill when it's a good one i will save it let's say i've received the first time shot with roberto lacerna and now another player needs first time shot in this case it's johan Cruyff. when we go for Cruyff now you can see that i already equipped him with double touch through passing and super sub for me first time shot on him is really important especially as an amf and second striker what i will do now is i will go for the player actions and then i will use the legacy transfer and now with the filter, I'm looking for the additional skill first time shot. 
here you go it's here and you will find roberto lacerner in this list now we are pressing x on him and you can see yes he's got the additional skill first time shot and now we confirm and you can see that this roberto lacerna will now give his first time shot to johan croy and then he's getting eliminated and deleted so if you do the legacy transfer roberto lacerna won't be in your list anymore so you need to be careful that you do it correct and don't make legacy transfers to the wrong players it costs a lot of gp but at least you can use your gp in a good way in a proper way they are becoming useful these gps let's go to take your developed player to the pitch finish the legacy transfer guys and you can see here you go with the first time shot this is how it works the last topic and probably for you the most important topic which formations and tactics are working the best which one to go for as a formation i'm using the 4-2-1-3 especially with the two center forward and one second striker this is called the meta system most effective tactics available why this tactic is used since many years since more than a decade and it's how his name is saying really really effective if you know how to use it just check out my meta video and you will understand everything about it but today i want to show you the most effective tactics plural and how to use that as a team play style i'm using long ball counter but you can also go for quick counter both of them are really useful but quick counter i only recommend to players who are really good in defense who are familiar with anticipating games and active defending i know guys the comment will now pop up a lot in the comments i will make a defense tutorial a complete defense breakdown and it will be a massive video it will come soon guys soon just stay tuned and calma guys calma hermanos so this formation this tactics is really really effective but you can also go for different ones don't look now at the players just at the formation it's a 442 diamond formation with one dmf two cmfs and one amf and then two center forwards or one center forward and one second striker both are working with this formation you have lots of control in the center but you are also able to attack from the wings and prevent yourself from attacks from the wings with a 442 you can do nothing wrong another 442 formation which you can also use is this one where you play with one dmf one cmf and then at the both sides with amf in this case he plays with the young as cmf but he acts as the whole player is really offensive so almost like an amf with this you have lots of offensive power i can recommend you these two 442 formations a lot what you can do too is playing with five at the back three in the midfield and two in the front but i'm not a big fan of this especially if you don't play with offensive fullbacks so this is too defensive in my opinion i prefer play styles and formations where you can be more active the three at the back formation also really useful especially attacking wise you have lots of power in the offense but you are lacking in defense options in my opinion especially on the wings you are too vulnerable that's the reason why i'm not recommending this formation especially not for beginners i would like to talk about individual instructions they are important but not crucial you can also be really successful without using individual instruction they are not mandatory the most common one the most used ones are attacking wise the defensive instruction that the players are staying back and defensive wise the counter target option that the players will stick to the front and don't run back what you also can use is the man marking option especially when your opponent is attacking from the wings that you can man mark his wingers with your pullbacks this is also a really good option and another one is deep line which you can give mostly to your dmfs that they stay back when the opponent is attacking and if you're playing with four at the back your dmf will fall to the back and you will act like a five at the back formation these are the most used individual instructions one little feature but a really important feature is the in-match role captain always be safe that you selected a captain who has got the ability captaincy the definition says captaincy become the team's inspiration on the pitch reducing the effects of fatigue for all the team what means that guys that means this is like fighting spirit for the whole team if you are using a captain who has got the player skill captaincy 
that's my eFootball tips and tricks in eFootball 2024. In the next video, I want to discuss and answer some questions which are asked in the comments. So let me know in the comments what you want to know and I will pick some of them to reply to them on the next YouTube video. Thanks for watching, guys. I will leave you with a nice and smooth... Bye!